The man behind one of the hottest toys this season had a secret weapon against the toy giants. He got the mommy bloggers on board as guerrilla marketers. The president of Blip Toys, Bill Nichols, came up with the idea for these things. They're called squinkies. He's joining us from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Bill, the reason I know about you, because I don't have kids, is uh, Google Trends over Thanksgiving was just a blaze. You were the most searched toy on Black Friday. You had really tight supply. Tell me, tell our audience what the heck a little squinky is. Well, they're, they're tiny little collectibles. Um, they're highly detailed. They come in a bubble, and you can use them with all of our play sets that actually dispense them, and you can enhance the play set with every twist. So they look, some of them come in these little, what look like they come out of vending machines, the little bubbles there. So uh, tell yep, me. little capsules. It, little capsules, that's right. And they're small little rubber things. I mean, you sell them as a package. Was the idea affordability? I mean, where did you come up with the concept? Yeah, great question. Um, a whole bunch of things came together. Um, identifying an opportunity is the easiest thing to do, so we really looked at the small doll aisle. My Little Pony, Littlest Pet Shop, Polly Pockets were all there for a long time, and it was time for something innovative. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of fell upon this whole vending concept, and we were looking. You can buy from iPods to stickers in vending machines, and we researched it, and it's, it's a multi-billion dollar business. So we thought, Little girls love to have relationships with toys and they like things that don't have learning curves. Mm -hmm. So they're seeing these in every mall they go. So we thought, let's give them the whole dispensing mechanism as a play set. And if we can get them as an instant collector and give them 16 of them with one purchase, they become a collector and it was just a huge value. And then we were just off to the races. Bill, this is Scarlett in New York. Uh, my nieces will definitely love this toy, but I have two boys. What about something for the boy segment? Well, it, it, it's coming next year. So here's the neat thing is just because you have something successful in a girl toy doesn't mean it's going to transition to boys. The good thing we know is boys are going into the girl's aisle and buying squinkies, but we're going to go specifically after boys where it's a little more, little more edgier, a lot more detail, and then we're bringing licenses like Marvel superheroes, Hot Wheels cars, um, Cars 2 with the new movie coming out. So we're really going to give boys what they're looking for. And it, it sounds like you've got some licensing uh, agreements here as well. Well, I know you were you were uh, a sales, uh, what was it, national sales director at, at Hasbro for a while. You worked with some of the big toy giants. I mean, how did you translate that into starting up your own small business? I've always been a frustrated uh, product developer and designer, so I came up through the sales rank, but always loved innovation, loved something new, and then just really started tinkering. Um, toy industry is incredibly addictive. Um, it's a great reason to never grow up, so it's just one of those things where I go in every day and love what I do, and I have just an incredible team of people with me, and we just really like to inspire and innovate. How did you decide on the price point? Uh, well, what it is, is we're really looking for value. Um, we're a smaller company, which allows us, we don't have the big overheads. So everything that we're trying to do is really provide value. In tough economic times, we have a much better success rate if you can actually provide value to the end user. Well, we were looking on um, eBay, actually, and there's kind of, a, not, not a black market, but there's a secondary <laughs> market for, for these squinkies since they were in tight supplies. So the prices, actually, for some of the bigger packs have gotten uh, up there. Uh, we were seeing them on eBay for over $100 a set. Well, well, what's interesting is, um, you know, kids love collections and they love collectability. So what we did is some of the things that are showing high prices on eBay is we have um, chase figures. So we have rare, common, and ultra rare figures that we salt out and it becomes a treasure hunt for kids. So as they go into the toy aisle, they literally rifle through each one of the pegs and the items and they're looking for specific items. And, and on our website, you can go in and find out which ones are rare and which ones are common. Bill, we introduced you by saying that you got the mommy bloggers on board. I wonder whether they gave you any suggestions or feedback that you incorporated into how you uh, sell these products. You know, a great question. The interesting thing about mommy bloggers, I love it because they're they're raw. They tell it exactly the way it is. And with that, it's a double-edged sword because they could say things that maybe not are very good for your product. But yeah. we really were big believers that, you know, cream rises to the top. So we sent it out to 300 different mommy bloggers and it just became a sensation. But yes, they gave us great comments back, great comments like, you know, 
continue with the value. Here's the way that my kids play with it. Could you do this type of play set? And here's some other things. So as we're reading all of these, we will be incorporating a lot of their ideas as we move into our new directions. Uh, Bill, just one last question as we let you go here. You had, what, 16 employees. It's interesting to see a small business person uh, find some success in, in this market. How has business been for you in terms of getting things going, getting off the ground? Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's been really good. Um, a lot of the um, retailers and supporters, they're looking for newness and they're looking for innovation. I think there's a lot of opportunities for small companies like us because we can move faster and we can bring ideas to market quicker. Mm -hmm. Some of the bigger companies take several years to develop products. So we, we've yeah. actually found um, it's been a great opportunity for us.